We are going to be doing three things in this module. First, we're going to talk about what the geometric mean is. We're going to define it. Second, we're going to indicate how to calculate the geometric mean using data from the adjusted close. So this differs from the uh, geo mean function in Excel. And then finally, we're going to talk about annualizing returns. All of these items will be items that you will implement in homework two. In defining the geometric mean, it's often useful to compare, compare it to the arithmetic mean. And the arithmetic mean is the one that you typically see when you see analysis and, and returns. So anytime you see a prospectus, it will be at the arithmetic mean. Compared to the geometric mean, the arithmetic mean will be higher. So the higher, the arithmetic mean will be higher than the geometric mean, and it will diverge more the more variable in, in this time series it is. So if we're looking at treasury bills and treasury notes, the geometric mean and the arithmetic mean will vary less than they will in stocks. And as those stocks become more investment or are more variable, they will have more variability. The geometric mean does, in my opinion, and most many people's opinion, uh, more accurately it more accurately for, reflects returns from the investment. The negative to it is that it can be somewhat difficult uh, to calculate, as you've seen with the geo mean in uh, homework one. The geometric mean assumes when we calculate it or when we use it, we are assuming that all the cash returns from the investment are being reinvested in the stock. This isn't necessarily true, but um, it often, often is the case. For example, you take a stock, it has a capital gain and a dividend return, and say that that, cap, that uh, dividend return is 5%. The dividend is assumed to be invested in the stock, or that's the assumption when you make a calculation of the geometric mean. It should be noted that when you're comparing that to the arithmetic mean, you can't really say what the assumption is with, with the arithmetic mean, but with the geometric mean, you are, imp you are implicitly making the assumption that the dividends or any other cash returns associated with the investment are reinvested in that investment itself. I'm going to give an example of the interpretation of the geometric mean. And let's say that the geometric mean is 10% and it was calculated over a 10 year period. So there was yearly periods we calculated the geometric mean and the, each one of those periods likely varied from that 10%. The geometric mean is interpreted as follows and this is the mid point here on this slide. If you invest $1 at the beginning of the 10 years, you will have $2.59 at the end. So the geometric mean that 10% raised to the 10 years causes the returns to equal whatever the variability of those returns had been. So $1 at the beginning equals $2.59 at the end, and the 10% geo mean or return 10% return, which equals the geo mean, would do that. It's important, again, to note the arithmetic mean would be at least be greater than or at best equal to the geometric mean. So the arithmetic mean will be higher than or equal to the geo mean. In this case, the arithmetic mean would be, or in this example, would be at least 10%. Here is the mathematical definition of the geometric mean. R sub g is the geometric mean, and you see what it equals there. The R sub 1, R sub 2, R sub 3, all the way up to R sub n, are the periodic returns from the asset. Those are, we calculated those in homework 1. We'll do them again. It's the percent return. You can see here it's 1 plus the R1 on plus the R2, and we actually did that in our worksheet last time. 
You multiply those together, take it to 1 over n, and that will equal your geometric mean. So here is the definition, the mathematical definition of the geometric mean. I'm going to take the geometric mean and rework it a little bit. Um, you see two steps here. The first line here is our definition of the geometric mean. Do a couple more um, arithmetic changes to that expression to come up with the bottom one in red. This may aid somewhat in inter interpretation. And we're also going to use this with our adjusted close data to come up with a simple way of calculating the geometric mean. Bottom one, we have all of our returns. We multiply those, those together. If you look at the expression on the right-hand side of the equation, you will find that if you invested $1 at the beginning of the period and followed it through all of those periods, that to the right of the expression would give you what you would have at the end. Again, we're always reinvesting all of the dividends in that investment. The expression to the right just finds the one return that causes the R1, R2 plus Rn to come up and equal that expression to the right. So that's the definition of, again, the geometric mean reworked a bit. And you can see it there, and we are going to use that in our adjusted close data. You have downloaded from Yahoo Finance, and this slide is just showing a download from Yahoo Finance, data, stock data. This happens to be daily data, um, traded on the daily data base. Gives you the date, open, high, low, close, and the adjusted close, which is circled and pointed at there, and then the volume. We have been using the adjusted close in calculating returns. We're going to talk about that a little bit more here. But the adjusted close, we use that to calculate the uh, daily returns. And we're also going to use that to calculate the geometric mean. And I'm going to give you a method of calculating the geometric mean in cases where the Excel function for the geometric mean does not work. There again circled, starred, or pointed at is the adjusted close. Next, I'm going to define what that adjusted close is. Here is the definition of the adjusted close. It comes from an article in Infestopedia. You see the web link there at the bottom. Um, you can go to that, uh, that link or that uh, website and find this definition. The adjusted close is actually very close to the closing price, except that it has been adjusted to count for any actions done by the company itself that would in, impact returns. Um, in essence, what we're trying to do with the adjusted close is come up with an adjusted series that reflects the other actions of the company as it impacts returns. Two of the big ones are stock splits. So if we split the stock between 1 to 2, for example, we have now have two stock prices for 1. We are going to impact the adjusted close, and that a 2 for 1 stock split would just cause the adjusted close on the day before to be half of what it was the day after. The other item that it accounts for are dividends. So stock splits, dividends, and there's a couple others. But the end result of this calculation is, is that the, the adjusted closing prices can be calculate, used to calculate returns that take into consideration the stock splits. They also get, because they get the uh, dividends in there, they get the current returns as well as the capital gains. So those two items are, are accounted for in the adjusted closing price series. We are going to use those definition of adjusted close in calculating the geometric mean. 
And remember, adjusted close at the beginning of our time period. So at the very beginning of when we want to calculate returns and the adjusted close at the very end of our data series. And we've defined those two things here. Adjust AV is our adjusted close at the beginning of the period, our adjusted value, adjusted value at the end. We can make this following um, definition that you see at the very bottom, adjusted value at the end, adjusted close at the end, will equal the adjusted value at the beginning, plus 1 plus our times, I'm sorry, 1 plus our geometric mean raised to the number of periods. And now all we have to do is solve for the geometric mean. But if you look at that time series, all we're saying here is that the adjusted close at the end will equal the adjusted close at the beginning of the, the, the series plus times with the relationship given by the geometric mean. So we're going to take that expression. The expression one here just comes from the previous page. We're going to rework it and come up with expression two and all of those uh, changes are arithmetic changes. You should be able to do those relatively easy. We're going to use equation two in calculating a geometric mean. And I'm going to demonstrate that now in Excel. Now going to demonstrate how to do the adjusted close. We're going to do this from point A to point B. We're at our Yahoo Finance website and I'm going to download data for our company and do our adjusted close uh, calculation. I'm going to pick a new company. I'm going to do Monsanto, uh, which is an agricultural biotechnological co company. Here we have our data and I'm going to go into historical data. So we've done this before, you've done this before. Um, I'm going to pick a period that uh, starts with the maximum. We're done here, so we're going to go back to October 18, 2000. I'm doing this on September after September 4, 2017. We're going to do this for historical prices. You could also do this for dividends only or stock splits, so you can get a pretty good feel for when those things are. We could do this for frequency of daily, which is what I'm going to do, but there's also a couple other options of weekly and monthly. I'm going to apply this to the data. So if we applied this, we now should have all of that data in there. And I'm going to download it. So I've downloaded the Monsanto data. I'm going to, it's here. I'm going to bring it up. And here is my data. And let me get it uh, arranged here a bit. Here's my Monsanto bat data going back to October 18th, 2000. Open, high, low, close, adjusted close. And the adjusted close is what we're going to be using. And finally, the volume. I'm going to insert a couple lines up here. Again, this is our Monsanto data. All right. I'm going to calculate returns here. I'm going to come over here and calculate my daily returns just like I always have. Go over here. And my daily return is going to be my adjusted close on the next day minus the adjusted close this day minus 1. So that day we had a really good 11% return. Copy that all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to have to, as I always do, go to the bottom. The bot last one is always negative 1 because we're due. we have 0. That's not right, obviously. So I'll delete that. Got that done. So now I have my daily returns here. I'm going to pull in over here and just for our notes. All right, here is how we have been doing this calculation in Excel. And again, we're calculating our adjusted close here. We have all of our periodic returns here. And um, these are R1, R2, R up to Rn. This is in this column. 
we want to find our adjusted close. Now, we have done this a couple times using the GeoMean function in Excel. I'm going to show you what happens here when you use it. So here's what we're doing. Let me just delete that. The way we've done this in Excel, we're using the GeoMean function is add one plus or return. Oops, it's now circular. I made a mistake here. I'm sorry. We'll do it again. Equals one plus return. Copy that down and I'm going to do the geo mean and it's going to most likely blow up. Oops. Let me highlight it all. goes all the way down to here to the bottom. Oops, let me do it again. Geo mean. There it is. And it gives me a number. For whatever reason, if you get too many numbers in the GeoMean calculation in Excel, it doesn't work. So we're going to just delete that, but I demonstrated here. All right, GeoMean, we added one plus it because for whatever reason, whenever you don't, the GeoMean function, if you have a negative number, blows up, and there will be negative numbers in there. GeoMean, it doesn't work when you get too much data. We're going to do this with the equation that we saw before. Here it is. We're going to take the adjusted value at the end, adjusted value at the beginning, divide those two, take it one to the end, minus one. Let me make this smaller and I'll do those calculations in this right here. First thing I'm going to do Adjusted value at the end divided by the adjusted value at the beginning. First step one, do that calculation and go down here to the bottom. There's my adjusted value at the end divided by my adjusted value at the beginning. Oops, that's fine. There is my step one, AVE divided by AVBE. Step two, I am going to calculate N. So now I'm going to calculate N, and I'm going to count those. Adjust to close. Oops. Equals count. I'm going to count these. All this rows here, and you could do this by looking at the row number two, but I'm going to count them. So there's my series. And I'm going to subtract one because there's a period in between here. So we have 4,244 periods. So now I have N, and now let's just do the calculation. Now you could do this all in one. Here's our geometric mean. So it will equal this raised to 1 divided by n. We have our calculation. We also have to subtract 1. So there it is. So there's our geometric mean. And just for fun here, I'm also going to put the mean and the standard deviation in here. Let me insert a row. So here's our geometric mean. You can see how we calculate it. I'm going to put our mean, which remember what that will be. It's going to be high. It, the arithmetic mean is always going to be higher. In Excel, it's going to be equal to the average. So we're going to calculate the average of our daily returns to come up with our return here. So 
So I'm going to take the average of my returns. Again, that would be higher. And it is. And I'm going to do the standard deviation as well. So we have our measures of return and risk. Point it one more time. There it is. So there's our mean standard deviation. And I'm just going to put percents on those. Give us a couple things here. So our geometric mean is 0.06 on a daily basis, 0.09 for our arithmetic mean. And our arithmetic mean is always the function of the average. And our standard deviation is 2.13%. So that's the calculation of our means and standard deviations. Final topic. We're going to talk about how we annualize daily returns. So on the last slide, our last demonstration, we calculated daily returns and their average daily returns for Monsanto uh, Corporation. And we've done that in a number of our homework assignments as well. We will often want to take those annualized returns and state them in terms of a yearly uh, equivalent. The yearly equivalent is often much easier to understand because a daily return, you, almost always, whenever you see a, uh, a return, it's stated on its annualized basis. Here you see the formula for calculating uh, the annualized return. You start with the periodic return, 1 plus the periodic return, and raise it to the number of periods in the year. For a daily period, it's 251. And 251, you, it's either 251, 250, or 252, depending on the year but there generally are 250 trading days during the year. So we're looking at trading days during the year, and that's why there's 251 and not 365. So there's the formula for, for taking daily returns and stating them in their annual equivalent. You can actually use that formula to take any period within the year and get it up to an annualized equivalent. Here is shows what the M should be. So if the, your periodic return is um, daily, as we have, M is 251. If it's monthly, if RCP is monthly, we would use M equals to 12, 12 months in a year. You can do this quarterly. If you have quarterly returns, there's four quarters in the year. Finally, if there's 52, 52 weeks, if your periodic returns are weeks, you can do 52 weeks in the year. What you're doing is um, compounding forward the periodic year return to come up with your annualized return equivalent. We can also state our standard deviations, which we calculated on a daily period, or for that matter, more generally monthly period or weekly period, we can state them as their yearly equivalent by using the formula here. We take the standard deviation of our daily return in this case, and we take the square root of M and move it up to our uh, annualized equivalent. I'm going to uh, now, with our Monsanto data, demonstrate the annualizing process and how we would do this in Excel. Here is our Monsanto data, and I'm going to insert here. We want to do our daily return, or we have done our daily return here. We have our daily geomean, mean, arithmetic, so this is our arithmetic mean. So there they are in our standard deviation. And now 
we want to annualize those and I'm going to do this annualization right here okay so we are gonna do those annualized returns here are our formulas from our previous page here's our return formula here's our standard deviation formula so there you see the two I'm just going to apply those here's our annualized geo mean so or excuse me I'm going to annualize our geo mean here start with our periodic return we're going to raise it to 251 minus 1 so it's 16 point, so our 0 0.06 return is actually 16.9 percent Seventeen. Our arithmetic mean is going to be higher, twenty-three point eight, and our standard deviation. We're going to take our standard deviation, multiply it by the square root. We have a function for that square root. It's two fifty-one. Thirty-three percent. So there you see it. Our annualized equivalent of our daily so our 0.06 daily mean works out to be a 17 percent annualized 0.09 percent arithmetic 23.8 again as we would expect or no is going to happen arithmetic mean is higher than our geo mean and our standard deviation is 33.7 percent so there's our annualization um, application to our Monsanto data. Summary of what we did. We defined what the geometric mean is and demonstrated it. We indicated how to calculate it using our adjusted closing prices. You will do that in homeworks in the future. Homework 2 in specific. And then we talked about how to annualize means and standard deviations. And we applied that to our period being a daily trading period daily daily trading period and took those means and calculated their annualized equivalents